everyone. Hello! And welcome to our second midst round table. This is the table. It is. And it's, it's round. round. <laughs> I'm Sam Regal. And I'm Marisha Ray. And tonight we are going to chat with the three creators and unreliable narrators hmm. of Midst. For any of you unfamiliar with Midst, it's an immersive, semi-improvised sci-fantasy podcast recounted by a trio of mischievous narrators. The series is a surreal, reality-bending story about a crotchety outlaw, a struggling cultist, and a diabolical bastard making terrible decisions in the world on the edge of disaster. And of course, spo spoiler warning for anyone not yet caught up on seasons one and two of Midst, tonight's discussion will involve spoilers for the story so far, but you've seen it, right? You wouldn't be here if you haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, pause. Yeah. Don't stop. Pause. pause. <laughs> you can do that on, on yeah. Twitch and YouTube, right? Go to another account <laughs> yes. so you don't have to unpause this. Yes. Listen to the several hours of content. Yes, and then come back. And then and come back. On pause. Okay, and yeah, we're yeah, back. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget the third and final <laughs> season, final season yeah. of Midst comes out next week. Season three unfolds February 14th, Valentine's Day. Listen to the pure sound experience every Wednesday, uh, anywhere you stream podcasts, or watch illustrated video episodes on the Critical Role YouTube channel. Either way, join the fold on midst.co, this is important, to get early access on episodes, behind the scenes bonus content, music downloads, mm -hmm. digital artwork, and so much more. Okay, we're done with all the talking points. Yeah. Let's welcome back the creators of Midst. Um, we gotta, we're gonna talk to them yeah. on this teletheric, which it's we're gonna tune in. This thing also makes me nervous. Right now. Life, dangerous. How does it work? I think we gotta <laughs> oh, there's a knob here. Ooh. Is Wait, something is happening? <laughs> We're trying to pretend like this works. And it works! <laughs> oh, oh my god! Hey. They're here! I think we have a better connection this time. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. There's been some upgrades to this thing yeah. since last time. Teletheric, but also holographic this time. What have you done? Is, I know, you're just actually in the radio waves. We're, we're electromagnetic this time, folks. We're better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, howdy, third person. Uh, why don't you folks reintroduce yourselves to everyone? Okay. And uh, yeah, can you summarize? I, I, I guess in introduce first yourself introduce. first. First, introduce yourself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm Sarah. And I am Matt. And I am Zen. We're third person, it's Miz, we're back. Yes. Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> With um, bodies this time. Sort yeah. of, electromagnetic in, in a way. spectral forms. You couldn't in call the, it that. Uh, in the semi-flesh. Y'all, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this was a pretty bonker season. Mm -hmm. Things are heating up, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you will. Cooling down. Yeah, <laughs> depending on which side <laughs> of the un you are on. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I want you all to summarize season two in your own words in like one sentence. Maybe one and a half sentences. It could be oh. one full sentence and then a couple words that don't make sense. <laughs> yeah. How does this uh, work? Do I start the sentence? Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, we'll, we'll like say the middle. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I claim the beginning of the sentence because well. then okay. finishing it is your problem. I see. Well, okay. why don't you take it away, Sarah, and we'll do our best yes. to follow. Um, in season two, it's about the aftermath of the terror disaster. Well, the terror itself and the aftermath, as our heroes. Or, well, are they heroes? They're not, they're not <laughs> heroes at all. I teed uh, that up badly. It's the worst keep it going, keep it going. Our protagonists are faced with various situations and locations. That's great, you're doing great. <laughs> Uh, we find out new insights and character interactions that eventually lead our protagonists to discover hard truths, <gasps> cold facts, Ooh. and dangerous realities about themselves, <gasps> others, See, and the I... world and cosmos outside of them, but most importantly, the cosmos within. Oh! oh. Oh. You brought it, you landed the planes oh. in. Amazing. I'm confident we, we did we that can. in the right order. Yes. <laughs> that was amazing. It's almost like you guys are really good at semi-improvised just, just storytelling. Just narrating 
Yeah. As we do. Just live in that narrating life. Narrator's it was definitely got a narrate. not one sentence. <laughs> it though. certainly so wasn't. We did not fulfill the homework assignment. Um, so we were going to ask you just some fun questions about the world, about the creation of, uh, of the podcast, uh, about Ooh. the creation of the story, about how you three work together, um, and get some glimpses behind the scenes, if you don't mind. We have some questions written yeah. down here. Um, um, before you jump in, oh, sorry. I feel like I have to shout out oh, yeah. this Misty themed cocktail. I haven't tasted it yet. It's really good. Okay. It's really Ooh. good. Ooh. Well, now that we're spectral figures, we can, so we're no longer just in the radio, we can see <laughs> brilliant yeah. orange Did you know beverages. we can see what you're doing? Is that true? Wow. Oh, yeah. God. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? It technology. Does. Technology can be terrifying. We're right behind We're hovering you. behind you. Don't look. Maybe Don't look. Don't look. Lips. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel, what, I think, I like the name that that Sarah landed on, which oh. is calling this a tequila, tequila on rise. I like yeah. it. What was the official name though? The midst, the midst. The mitz- it could know. also go by Mixed- the moniker Mixed-a-rita? of a Mitsterita, perhaps. The Mitsterita? Yeah, it's Pretty like a, for those of you at home, it's like a gingered turmeric margarita. It is. It's really good. It is yeah. delightful. Maybe we'll post the, the uh, like recipe cabaret. on socials. Yeah. Heck yes. Like LinkedIn. Yeah, I like that. Check LinkedIn for the <laughs> recipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the right platform. Continue where you left off. Oh, yes. So, questions. Um, this season takes us to all sorts of new uh, places, locations uh, in the world, both in the fold and the un. Um, the settings like Ver- Vermilion County, Sequester, the highest light. How do you come up with these places? Are they based in real places? Are they based in... Fever dreams, like what? How did you come up with these places? Mostly fever dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Combination of all of the above. Yeah. Vermilion County, we've talked uh, a bit about before. I think that was inspired very much by westerns, mm-hmm. by that kind of American Southwest vibe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Se- Sequester has sort of that like night market, uh, like outdoorsy, you know, community space with interesting bioluminescent critters and plants mm-hmm. growing. And and with Sequester, it was the first time we had really spent significant time in the fold mm-hmm. away from Midst at an islet that spends all of its time entirely immersed within the fold. And people have a lot of ideas about the fold. Mm-hmm. It's uh, presented in a pretty ominous, mysterious way throughout season one. So we wanted to take the opportunity to challenge some expectations to maybe show you a place that was uh, definitely unfamiliar, but maybe not all that weird as you had been led to expect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'd be remiss if I did not say that uh, Mids itself in Vermilion County is heavily inspired by uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Mm-hmm. Oh, of Spaceman yes. Spiff. Shout out to Spaceman Spiff. Enjoyer. Spaceman Spiff, Calvin's uh, imaginary alter ego Spaceman, I remember is known that. to crash land on some pretty weird looking desert worlds. Yeah, the way those are drawn which, uh, is just so Majorly inspiring. inspired mids for us. I That's did not know that. So <laughs> get did after your <laughs> Calvin and no, Hobbes. Know that. Wow, really what discover a, the what true story origins of mids itself. That's wild. And uh, as far as the highest light, oh yes, that's uh, well, it's quite a contrast to the other two. High in the un, bright, shining, sparkling, utopian. (laughs) Big air quotes around that, Mm -hmm. which you can see now. Yeah, Yeah. we can see your air quotes. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, Yeah. a little bit more energy, like a kind of airport concourse or an indoor mall. uh, Really, really fancy But glitzy, yeah. Yeah. Sort of a a very built up, very well established um, city environment. We get to spend a little bit of time in and around where the Valor system, where the Trust have kind of their home base and where they've gotten to build up their whole... Mm-hmm. economic ecosystem. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place. I'm sure nothing bad has ever or will or ever could. happen there. Indeed. Why why do you have to ruin everything I third know. person? We're mischievous narrators. Yes. That's what we do. It it really is gorgeous in a very like um uh yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? Well, like, oh, it sounds like you were just looking for a word that you shouldn't say and stopped yourself. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feel bad, bad, bad government vibes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know the why, highest why lights. You could possibly think that. And the yeah. trust. Yeah, I do feel like like the first season of Midst was pretty definitively kind of 
lingered in that space western mm -hmm. realm, whereas I feel season two did start to kind of push the bounds and get out of that a little bit more and go a little bit more fantasy mm -hmm. and, of course, introduced a lot more lore and a lot more locations with such vast and detailed story and world building, did you ever get concerned of like overwhelming the audience? Like, did you, <laughs> did you have to ever edit yourself? What was the planning process like as you started to expand into this rich and really growing world? Well, we jokingly said in the past, it's not a joke anymore though, it's mm -hmm. the truth, that season one of Miz was the tutorial level. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey! It's just... It's, it's <laughs> spectrally hovering there. It's, it's weird. Trippy, spooky. Uh, yeah, I mean, the entirety of season hey, one was, was designed... Stop, stop Oh my, who did... It's electromagnetic <laughs> violence. Oh, no. I never thought this day would come, Sam. What have you done? <laughs> Uh, yeah, season one largely serves as a teaching mechanism to slowly and in a procedural way teach the listener all the strange little fact. How does the cosmos work? What is the orientation of things? Mm -hmm. How does the fold work? What is the mm -hmm. un? What does we myths do? We discussed constantly whether we were uh, leaking out new information at the right pace, mm -hmm. uh, just fast enough to keep things interesting, not to overwhelm anyone, and we don't usually like to do big exposition dumps mm -hmm without reason. We prefer to introduce this information organically as we're telling the story. Yeah. So, As sung in the famous musical You're in Town, nothing kills a show like too much exposition. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, so what a pull. To, yeah, Whoa. kind of piecemeal it out and, and present it in a way that maybe had something that you know, connected to the narrative shape of that particular episode that dealt with similar themes and could be used as a way to sort of, I don't mm -hmm. know, riff off of or play on um, the experiences that the characters are going through and the places they yes. visit. Yeah, there's a lot to learn about an all new cosmos and um, our goal is that by the time you've listened to season two, by the time you begin that season, mm -hmm. you've learned the basics, you've got the groundwork in place, you kind of know how everything should be working and you understand the rules, so that when those rules start to break, you know why, mm -hmm. and you know why it matters. And so, you'll yeah, never be confused again. Never again, not, not once. Not even any time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious, just from like a process perspective, um, between the three of you, like, so a place like Sequester, for instance, it could be very weird. Like, um, Good thing it's not. Is there, well, but there has to be, you just said, like, there has to be rules in order to break rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, you can't just be weird about everything. Is there one of you in the group that is like the idea person who's just like, and their hands are all wheelbarrows and they can fly <laughs> when they sing? And like, and is it, and, and then is there another person in the trio who's like, well, let's make it, they, one of them can have hands with wheelbarrows, but let's not make them all hands with wheelbarrows. Like, what, what is, who's, who's the idea person and who's like the focus person? And then who's the one who's like making uh, snacks? I think we're we're all kind of all three by turns. Yeah, I I think we do a pretty good job of giving each other the like checks and balances to be like you know well yeah. if I really like wheelbarrows, how many hands can I make yeah. that way? <laughs> um, but it's not every you know every situation we sort of approach in a I mean collective way and think about you know how how do we want to link this together yeah i don't know if we have a clear answer to that yeah who's, yeah. who's the weird one who's the <laughs> idea person well um, i could tell a, a short anecdote okay. um, do it. sarah and matt in particular love to develop the nomenclature for new and weird oh, things oh that's true, that's true. Mm. So we any time a, a new strange thing pops up in the sh show i may be content to refer to it as you know something or other device but sarah and matt will say no we will spend a week we got a devising a bizarre Latinate phrase. <laughs> we're gonna look for, up archaic we're gonna, yeah, terms. We're look at mm. Ancient Greek linguistics are mm -hmm. painstakingly divide, you know, so I don't know. In a way I feel like if there must be a loose cannon, it's like, yeah, whatever, let's just go. Perhaps it is maybe me. <laughs> but again, by turns it is all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. It does really feel like it comes so naturally for all of you all, because I feel like even me trying to imagine in this world, like, oh, what would, what would my weird fold ailment be? I'm like, uh, 
Uh, she's, she's got margaritas for hands. <laughs> Shit, no, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like it's no, yeah, no. it's a good one. Don't it's sell true. yourself short. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this season also, uh, it felt like everything was uh, just just a little bit more like refined, a, li- a little bit mm-hmm. more. Uh, uh, a little tighter in terms of like the music, the sound design, the world building, the voice acting, just everything was just like a little bit stepped up. Obviously you've been doing it longer, uh, you're getting better at everything, but like what what lessons did you learn from season one that you that you carried into season two? Was it easier to make season two or was it way harder because uh, because you had to one-up yourself? Like uh, I, I guess what was the difference between season one and two? Mm, great question. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think all of us learned different things. We learned things as a group, but individually certainly we did. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest lesson I learned, I think we all learned it on some level, is just that we could do it. I mean, with season one, everything was new to us. Mm-hmm. It was a totally unfamiliar experiment, and it, um, I think it gave us some confidence in ourselves mm-hmm. to see that we already had a season under our belt. It mm-hmm. turned out all right. Mm-hmm. People seemed to like it, so we went into season two with a bit more um, belief in ourselves and a desire to take some bigger chances and some bigger swings, mm-hmm. and I think it paid off. Yeah, I mean, to the point of kind of some of the new locations that we get to see in season two, a lot of that world building often just emerged as a like, you know, what what would be cool though? Like what would be sort of sick as far as a location <laughs> or sick <laughs> how could we how thing. could we go there and do that in a different spot that you know has sort of a, a unique set piece or or you know get to hang out in that unique environment but in a storytelling way. I think we we felt enabled to go there and try those things just because it was so sick. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Sick, bro. <laughs> hey, thanks. Twisted. On the uh, production side of just assembling and producing the second season, um, I certainly learned a lot from having done the sound and music for the original season. I think season one, doing the sound and music for that season, I was I as the sound person was laboring under some expectation like here this is how a podcast is done or you should mm-hmm. if you want to have dope music you must do these dope things because other people who make cool stuff do stuff this way so if you want to be cool too you too should do these things uh, and season two is much more of a learning experience of just no be yourself do the weird mm-hmm. thing that you want to do don't worry about it just go um, yeah. I mean the music for example in season two um, well, let me let me say the music of season one was largely pre-produced. I wrote a lot of themes in advance. You know, the theme song for the show, the theme sure. musics for the characters, mm-hmm. uh, created and produced in advance of the show. In season two, the music, much like the dialogue and narration, is mostly improvised at the time of recording. Wow! Um, so not at the time that you're recording the dialogue. Or excuse me, not, no. not at the time of recording. But like but you, the, you have an edit, you play it back, and you sort of yeah. 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 jazz Guitar. to it. Basic, basic, kind of, yeah, kind of, kind of, <laughs> kind of, basically, it was jazz. Uh, <laughs> kind of, is cool. I like which that. is which is a big learning for me in the sound and music of season two that I just, just kind of went for it mm-hmm. in new ways and tried to learn to be more confident in my own sound and music choices, which was big for season two. Yeah, you can definitely, you can hear the payoff and uh, also have to shout out like, you guys obviously got more comfortable in your characters and you know, acting on mic as well. There were some pretty intense acting moments in this season. Uh, So it's incredibly cool to watch the progress over the course of from season one and season two. Yeah, did so. you, the three of you, have any moments where you where you uh, acted out a scene or or did a new character or pulled off a new accent or something where you were like, that was pretty good. I was yeah. pretty like, were you anything that you're proud of? Yeah, we. I mean, we definitely experimented with greater emotional range mm-hmm. in season two than in season one. Mm-hmm. Looking at you, episode thirteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lot more um, writhing and agony 
in season <laughs> two. <laughs> that's lot, true. Or, you know, screaming and crying and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. There but almost in season one. Like when you're watching a, a first season of a television show, for example, there can be that period of time where you sort of see the actors, you know, in experiencing their character, getting really like settled in, understanding, you know, where they're coming from and where they're going and what their wants and hopes and dreams are. And I think for us, that was something we got to experience through the season one process and yeah. then in season two really cut them you know loose into these new spaces and see where they will want to go yeah absolutely i mean i feel like sarah with amelda <laughs> got even more dynamic oh, you amelda know versus so season fun to voice like, <laughs> like so she's fun a delight yeah. yeah all all really awesome stuff and it's it, i just love seeing artists and shows seeing those progressions totally it's part of the magic. Thank you. That Thank means you. a lot yeah. coming from you. Yes. Oh. Well, now what will you do if I, if I pick your nose, though, Matt? Well, you that can't a, do anything oh, about. Oh. <laughs> 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 Wait, I'm batting wrong. Um, okay, we should do. We should move on. We should move we on. We asked some questions. We got some answers. Uh, but before Jesus, before <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Before we get into more episodic specific questions. Okay. Um, we have a little game right. that yes. we wanted to play with you, third Games. person. Games. Yes, um, this is a game. really fun game idea channel. from the, the Midst Production team. Um, we're going to show you a series of emojis. Okay. And right. then you all have to guess which episode they are connected to. The emojis oh. sort of play out the plots of specific moments from episodes or specific yes. Uh, episodes. Yes. And you'll have to guess. And let's make it a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll all have to buzz in, uh, oh. and, and whoever gets it first gets gets a point. Oh, right. okay. Uh, oh. Or do you want to you want to up the stakes here and play with real money? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> play for money? <laughs> well, <laughs> or, or valor. Or valor. Valor. Uh, valor. Valor. I That's like good. that. That's play good. for valor. Okay. Okay. For, first one. First one. We have tea kettle, bouquet of flowers. And the bitchy nail painting emoji. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, oh ding. Okay, oh, Matt. Matt. Yes. Can, I, can I do this? I believe this is episode five from season two, Sugar Coat. Oh! Where we, that is That correct. is a correct. Point. glorious is day. Absolutely a little tea, he gets a little brunch, goes to a little spa. Yeah, the flowers uh-huh. are the brunch because Indeed, they eat the flowers. Indeed, look at that guy doing what he does there in that room. <laughs> That's oh. the garters for me. I am just <laughs> yeah. obsessed really with this artwork. Mm-hmm. This is by Leo Chiral, and just look at the depiction of that city, the highest mm-hmm. light. Yeah. Look at Weep, look at his sock garters. Yeah. So yeah. good. Every object in this room is so beautifully designed. Mm-hmm. If I may say, there's so much beautiful art that has been created for the series, but I, I scarcely dare to play favorites, but if I had to pick one weep piece so far that is just fully him, yep. this has got to <laughs> be the, the one guy. for me. The so confidence. Far. I have never seen him more himself. Yeah. This is it for me right now. So many of the art pieces, it's just very Holy like, smokes. oh what yeah, these two. Oh. Champion. So many what of these, pose. it's like, I want to go to there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do I do that? <laughs> well, I actually, I think this one is, this art piece, I think is for the next emoji one. I'm not entirely sure, uh, if I'm Let's not mistaken. But, out. not to spoil it, let's see if you guys can guess this. We have, um, bank emoji? Money bank. Money nope. bank, mm. syringe, <laughs> and the, uh, grimace, Ooh. icky Ooh. face. I'm getting bad Ooh. vibes. Yeah. yeah, that's an easy one for me. That's oh, you're gotta be in. Okay. episode 13, Inside, when Weep visits the bank. And, and has a wonderful day. And yeah. uh, <laughs> learns a thing or two. <laughs> yes, uh, wonderful day at the Trust. Yes. Uh, there he goes. Fantastic field trip, that is absolutely correct. Episode, episode 13. One point for Sarah. Uh, these are some more images from uh, from that episode. Yes. yes uh, art by Karina Pavlova. Yes, mm. beautifully rendered. Oh, this one. Oh, yes. Matt. Yes. Love it. Extreme has I love, a field trip day. I love the way that um, Weep snaps in this episode, how it happens mm-hmm. just in the blink of an eye. Zen does a fabulous performance going from playing it cool, sarcastic, casual Weep mm-hmm. to angrily clawing at the bars of his cage. Yeah. Once How? he gets called out by his his captors in mm-hmm. a manner of speaking, he is he there like um that. is there a rule are there rules around uh, his 
his syringing, his his self care, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. do do you know the cycle of of when it when it strikes, or does it just sort of happen? when you need it too dramatically. Well, it seems to be that he has to administer to himself on a semi-regular schedule, and mm -hmm. if he misses one of those scheduled uh, self-care times, mm -hmm. uh, the badness starts to build up pretty quick. Yeah. But also, as we explore in this episode, inside that regularly recurring cycle can be exacerbated or fast-tracked uh, a bit stress. by... Um, by having a wonderful day, emotional <laughs> states. Yeah. By, by a wonderful day visiting the bank, yes. Or yeah, a situation where your friends double cross you and close you into a, a big scary room. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at you! You're being so kind, calling them friends. <laughs> well, well, um, they're friends. They went to brunch and to a spa at yeah. least once. Yeah. That means they're friends. That means they're friends, right? Weeps friends with everybody <laughs> until, oh. until he's not. He sure is. <laughs> Um, okay, right. next one. Next get, one. get your next buzzers one. ready, your okay. mouth buzzers ready. We've got a box, a whale. <gasps> I couldn't possibly imagine. And a fire. Ooh. <gasps> Why should I ding this one? Do it. I can't possibly imagine that this is our episode Descent. What? Or excuse me, Tinderbox. Oh, okay, Tinder so judges, Descent. judges. Ooh. Zen got it wrong Ooh. briefly. I, I, what have I done? Hilarious it's thing time about for me to Zen leave. is that they don't actually know what any of the episodes are called. No. So you want to know something funny about me? Right? <laughs> oh. I was hoping we wouldn't have to bring this up, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> it's great trivia. Okay. Yes. Well, since it's my problem, I'll describe my problem. I don't listen to mids. I just make it. Yeah, that makes sense. We understand so I, that. Yeah. I, I listen to each episode about a hundred times when I make it, and then yes. when it's done, I don't listen to it again. So I yeah. forget what they're called, and I forget which number they are. Well, we'll forgive evidenced. you, because your sound work on this episode created, I think, one of the most tense and... Um, That's so cool. Uh, ...affecting episodes kind. of this season. Yes. And this art by Ali Irwin just really drives home that deep underwater horror mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. Say more about deep underwater horror, Sarah. Uh, well, the thing <laughs> about deep underwater horror is that I particularly hate it. I have, is it thalassophobia or, um, you fear know. Fear of the yeah. ocean. Yes, well, Sorry. it's not fear of the ocean so much. It's specifically fear of like a big fish coming at me out of the ocean. Awesome. Like imagine you're yeah. floating <laughs> in deep water and Smoky. you look below you and you see a mouth just mm -hmm. materializing upwards towards you. Mm -hmm. So. Definitely drew on that a bit when devising yes. this episode. Yes. Yeah, yes. you're gonna have to talk with Talison because he shares this yeah. phobia. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I feel like it's a very reasonable Fear phobia. Yeah. No, totally. For sure. It's a very I mean, cool, very cool art piece, and such beautiful work too by Critical Role's Animation Squad, making that episode come to life. Amazing. Oh, yes. oh yes. shout out. Yes. I'm, re I'm reading yeah. here on the back of this card. It says, "Interesting fact: Our editor Max said that this episode took 100 hours of export time." Oh, is that true? It is. That I is spoke to him the other day and he explained to me the absolutely insane number of different looping effects and backgrounds mm -hmm. and features and details that are all happening simultaneously mm -hmm. throughout the episode. There's very good reason why it took so long to render. He, he did incredible work. The blinking of that light mm -hmm. to the sound in the episode, which is so satisfying to watch and it was it was clearly worth the time, but boy, that is a lot of hours. Yeah. yeah. He to be fair, he owns a 2008 uh, IBM Power Book, <laughs> so that's probably why I took that long. Yeah, he's on a 3G <laughs> yeah. as well. No. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, I do have to give a shout out to uh, editor Max Shapiro, yes. who does all of the really cool like motion champion. graphics. The greatest. Yeah, he's he's great, and this has truly become um, a love of his working on this project as well. It is he's kind of become his adopted baby. It's amazing to see who. Yeah, how many people like sort of stumble onto Midst in one form or another, whether they are employed to work on the show <laughs> or just stumble onto it uh, because someone recommends it as a podcast and really go deep and and uh, and really immerse themselves into it. It's it's so fun to watch yeah. new fans uh, uh, get into it. And it's also fun to watch them go to mits.co and sign up to be a supporting, <laughs> a supporting you, member you of our community. You watch them do that, Sam? I, I watch people. Every time someone signs up, I'm watching them. <laughs> we have a little algorithm. Oh it God. turns on their laptop. Their their camera. Camera. <laughs> Maybe, so we can to Maybe we can watch Sam watch. Well, as well, spectral magnetic right ghosts, now. we're watching Sam right now. Yeah. Yes. 
And we're what? watching you bring out the next card. Do you have yes. more? Before Sam got weird, though, it is we were we were just talking about this earlier about how like once people discover mist, once they're in, they they're hooked. in. Yes. Like deeply, there's no like casual misty. Yes. Yes. It's it's a barbed hook. You yeah. cannot pull it out. Can't, yeah, it can't go back. Mm. Um, okay, we have um, handwritten <laughs> letter. Butterfly and I'm definitely not going to guess because I'll get the name. Ding, ding, ding. I ding it. Yes. Uh, This is episode 14, Imago. That is correct. Imago. Moth. uh, Um, This episode was just awesome. Phineas going on his own little um, mental and spirit quest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ayahuasca trip. Yeah, basically <laughs> smoking all those moths. Yeah, how did the moth, the the, the moth thing? Oh <laughs> yeah. Like, any inspiration there? Where you guys you great... smoking like um... you haven't smoked a moth? Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I we mainly all snort. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Just as a quick like framing detail, something that we ended up not really exploring in previous episodes of Midst was the use of like a flashback. Um, mm. We'll sometimes do a flash forward where we'll begin a season with a scene yeah. from further ahead. But we wanted to kind of figure out, you know, is there a way in universe for a character to revisit mm-hmm. past moments and get some of their context and see, you know, moments from their lives that help kind of paint a more thorough picture of where they're coming from. And we get we get that with Phineas here and um, his journey through, you know, some of these key moments helps bring him to this new place, this new understanding, not only of himself, but of like the, the things that he yeah. grew up in. Yeah. As far as why we picked a moth, I mean, there's nothing new about the idea of using moths and butterflies for transformation metaphors. And we just uh, decided to put our own spin on that yeah. classic idea. Yeah, yeah. smoking yeah. them. Yeah, that's right. cool. That's very cool. Art by Jessica Fong, by the way. Yes. For yes. Yes. So Gorgeous good. Art. Yes. I do, uh, while we're on this though, because uh, I remember this episode being so evocative too, because you had all the different mothers mm-hmm. that you were exploring. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mother Calamity, who mm-hmm. like, <laughs> I grok her, it's, it's me. <laughs> yes. yeah. Mother Trauma. Yes. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, Mother Anguish and Mother Trauma, and Mother Trauma was kind of a dick. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. this tracks. <laughs> so like, did you guys, or is there any more insight into the kind of archetypes and personalities that you assigned to these different matrons? Yeah. Um, well, the mothers, the, the naming convention that seems to be established for them is that they appear to name themselves after the ailment that they each specialize in treating. So we selected two mothers that seemed like they might have experience relevant to what Phineas was going through. And uh, yeah, just thought it would kind of be fun to have a nice one and a mean one um, <laughs> playing sort of the, the angel and the devil on his shoulder in yeah. a way. Having Although they are both trying to help him. Mm-hmm. Just one has better bedside banner than the other. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And you know, in a series like Miz where, where good people do bad things and bad people do good things, you can't just have an organization of totally beneficent, kind, sweet, gentle, and caring, occult. magic, occult mothers. <laughs> one of them's got to be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even the beneficent mothers have got weirdos. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Are there any other mothers that we haven't heard of, like Mother Halitosis or oh, Mother, yes. under, Mother, Bunyan, Mother Under joke. Tipping? But in a, <laughs> one of the appendices, uh, there's a sketch by Zila, and mm. she has also listed out names of several mothers that don't actually appear in the episode, but including such figures as Mother Cholesterol, <laughs> Mother Ennui. Yes. Um, who else have we got? Oh. Mother, mother bridge mother and amnesia, I believe. Oh, I think you're right. Yes. <laughs> How about mother mother issues? <laughs> yeah, you know? Mother mommy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you need it, they've got it. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, okay, let's go to the next card. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, right now, just to recap the score, I think we've got Matt at two, Sarah at one, Zen at one. Is that correct? Well, I think I, I think failed. Zen at, yeah, at zero. zero. <laughs> <laughs> Zen did stumble. So, yeah, I did. Uh, you knew what episode it was, just That's not true. what the true title That's true. I, I was familiar. I just didn't know the name. Well, here's because we're making up this game on the fly, this one's worth three points. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a magic ball mm-hmm. or whatever you call it. Yeah. 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 And then a squid guy and takeout. <laughs> 
Oh, ding, ding, ding. Oh, okay. I think this is episode nine, Crossroads. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Correct. Nice. In which they visit Sequester yes. and yeah, of course. we get introduced to this lovely night market depicted here by Sean Andrew Murray. Take just amazing. Soak in all those details. Mm -hmm. And Lark gives Zila a uh, divination reading mm -hmm. and they get some takeout and they decide what they're gonna do next. Mm. Ugh. That's so cool. So cool. So pretty. I love all the like bioluminescence. Oh, yes. That would be a great black I love all the little nice. critters. Yes, the, the little, little guys. guys. We love <laughs> a little guy. Uh, Look at these little guys. This is making me want nudes. <laughs> oh, so I, my mind went somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> some, some hot nudes. Okay, we've got oh. time for one more, one more. and you're in luck. This one's okay. worth 25 points. Oh, oh, oh so this oh, is for all the biscuits. This yes. is your chance then. Okay, we have Tidal Wave, uh -huh. Froggy, and Mind Blown ah, Emoji. I'll try it, I'll do my best. Could this possibly watch me fail this one too? Oh, I know what it is, but do I know the name and number? Number four, Weather. <gasps> yes! Oh, nice! Wow. Yes. Well done. Yes. Amazing. Zen pulls off mind Blown yeah. Frog yeah. Experience yeah. in the Caves. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, tremendous art by J. M. Fenner. Incredible. And this is just piece one before everything goes sideways. Oh, oh yes, oh, yes. Oh, everything descends so cool. into madness. Yes. Arrival of the terror affecting the uh, residents of Stationary Hill taking shelter in oh. the. The frog was the Caves. was an interesting choice for the emoji yeah. because uh, yeah. a lot of things happened, including some frog related shenanigans. That's true. That's true. Is it Giselle, whose entire Giselle. personality was replaced by frogs? Yeah. Yeah. We never really elaborate <laughs> on that or how that works, but it happens it's yet. Anyway. She likes it. It's good for her. <laughs> uh, amazing. Well, that concludes the game. Uh, the game element of today. And I win. And that congratulations. Was worth Twenty-five points. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Shoot! I thought I was doing well. <laughs> Um, we'll figure out what the prize is Made later. Made a real comeback yeah. there. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What we got, we got around here? Damn. How about half drink Starbucks if you want? That's that's what you win. Uh, Starbucks oh, gift card? My old, we, no, no, half drink no. Starbucks. Just <laughs> old yeah. Starbucks. Okay. I, mis I misheard. The teletheric must have broken up. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll fix this. Oh, ooh, ah, ooh, that's a curved dial. Made it really for me. <laughs> the horizontal <laughs> control. Um, I think we're gonna jump back into questions now, which yes. we have on our cards. Thanks. A few Ooh. episodic questions. Yeah, these are specific oh, to yeah. different Sounds moments good. in the in the season that we thought were uh, just just cool or uh, or confusing, <laughs> and we Let's wanted to do more about them. Yeah. Um, early on in the episode, um, uh, it, it kicks off. Uh, uh, what was the, what was the thought process behind spending an entire episode? Yes, it, so it, ki it kicks off in. Uh, a calamity and chaos. Mm -hmm. So what was the thought process behind spending an entire season building up Stationary Hill and Midst and then just to destroy it right off the bat? Um, was that Ooh. always the plan? Was that something that you three discussed in, in when you were planning out <laughs> season two? Or, uh, yeah, uh, talk. Mm -hmm. Well, we did consider a few different options before arriving at that, actually. There was a brief period where we were kicking around the idea of, well, what if they, the residents of Stationary Hill found some way to save themselves, to prevent the terror or to seal themselves off from it or just find a way to avoid being affected by it entirely. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we realized you, we just kind of had to let it happened to them. It's what the narrative wanted. It was mm -hmm. all this lead up towards this terrible, calamitous event and to then just have everyone escape. Mm -hmm. It felt like some of the drama fizzled out. Of so course. That's true. Of course. That no, you have decision. to spend an entire season building up a wonderful place and then destroy it. It's the well, only but it, it's not it's fully not destroyed, exactly destroyed either. It, it is must, you must transformed. Changed, modified, tweaked, and twerked by mm -hmm. the frickin' And what better way to demonstrate the danger of terrors than to have some of our characters live through one of the worst ones? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of those terror transformations and effects are just wild and, yeah. uh, and super cool that they have lasting effects on these characters that we got to know mm -hmm. uh, in season one. And uh, 
Yeah, it's just, it's just cool yeah. to, to see them totally change now. Yeah, margarita hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I love That's that. my insert. I love that character. <laughs> and they're not all bad things either. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things we wanted to show was just the varied unpredictability of terrors. Mm -hmm. What's scary about them isn't necessarily that it's going to be a bad thing. It's just complete entropy. It's chaos. It's mm -hmm. unpredictable. It contains bad things. It may also contain good things. It may also contain a variety of mundane or boring things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Do you have a terror generator? Like column <laughs> one is a body part, column Ooh. two is a food, and column <laughs> three is an animal, and it's like, oh, their noses are now <laughs> mustard dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been uh, the easy way to do it, but no, the terror generator is uh, the three of us sit around and come up with weird stuff. That's well, a really yeah. strange fun idea, though. Yeah, that's a quick terror generator. I feel like we can build that out, <laughs> put it on the midst website. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Let's do a it. A brief anecdote about uh, we particularly... We gave someone a job. job yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For no we reason. We meaning not us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. More questions. What were you, you were saying? You oh, had an I, antidote. Yeah, just uh, for like episode four in particular, whether uh, we each took a little bit of time to independently compose a few different terror effects, because oh, cool. shockingly, it is very hard to think of like a list of random effects, yeah. a spur of the moment on the fly. So we each kind of uh, sequestered ourselves away and did a little bit of like beat poetry prep and then <laughs> when we came in to record sort of performed it at each other and got mm -hmm. some of the different effects that ended up affecting the, that so cool. the That's so residents. Cool. Do you remember any fun. of the ones that uh, were left on the cutting room floor or that you didn't get to oh, I think bust we out? used almost everything. Okay. There were some actually that got deleted in editing because the segment just was endless <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember. It's Maybe not coming to me at the moment. Yeah, we did try and hit as many like different sensory experiences as we could. Sure. Um, yeah. Oh, but so fun. Great question. Well, jump into episode two. Mm -hmm. Amelda, sweet, sweet Amelda, <laughs> blames Spar. The first time she's been described that way. <laughs> <laughs> blames Spar, uh, Spar's training of Phineas's. Or, sorry. Imelda blames Spar's training for Phineas's actions at the Black Candle Cabaret, and we see this affect him throughout pretty much all of season two. Um, who do you all feel in your heart of hearts is truly <laughs> to blame for Phineas's actions? Mm, well, that's the question, isn't it? I yeah. mean, the whole trust is kind of built on figuring out blame and praise and exactly how much of it and exactly who it should be assigned to. And um, of course, Phineas is, is the one ultimately doing these terrible things, but um, we try to explore for any character that does a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Which is most of them. Which right. is most of them at some point or another. I mean, there is a whole chain of effects that leads to any moment and I don't know if it's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, things don't necessarily happen in a vacuum. It's true. And there will be more about why and how those systems influence one another. Yeah, why we're not done exploring that. that question. Yeah. Guilt is a theme throughout Midst, and I think, yeah, there will definitely be more exploration of that still to come. Amazing. Can't wait. Can't wait. Um, OK, more questions. Um, the highest light. There are folks who eat flower petals. Yes. But why? But why? Why? Why, why, why that? Good. Though? They're the best. <laughs> well, what better way to demonstrate the lavish opulence of a society than to have them eat flower petals? Also, we have some uh, mythic origins. Matt, perhaps you'd oh, like yeah. to expand. Oh, uh, yeah. Odysseus, in the famous Greek tale of the Odyssey, encounters a whole island of uh, individuals, the lotus eaters, mm. who eat nothing but flowers, right. but uh, when he and his crew arrive there, discover that the, these flower eaters are sort of not part of the world that he and his, mm. his sailor friends inhabit. They've A sort little of, out of touch, would you say? Yeah, yes. They have sort of uh, lost maybe the, the will to be involved in uh, normal human affairs and are sort of stuck here, you know, enjoying a paradise on the surface, but 
you know, at what cost is maybe the question. It seems like a cool, fun way to support a frivolous, image-obsessed society. Sure. I don't think flowers are very nutritionally dense, but mm. they look pretty to mm -hmm. eat, so clearly their priorities have moved on beyond mere survival mm -hmm. if they're dining entirely on floral bouquets. Yeah. Wow. And we've established yeah. a little bit that flowers and other greenery is actually pretty hard to grow right. in, up in the, you know, yeah. Mica razor laced territories of the high altitudes Which of the Which only makes it more luxurious. It's exactly. more expensive and more difficult to grow. So it's even more um, unobtainable and desirable to the high end elite. So of course they would eat flowers. Makes this sense. is uh, your equivalent of like gold leaf chocolate chip cookies. Yep. Of Precisely. Course. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yep. awesome. Or a 20, $20 hot dog. <laughs> $20 hot dog? There's a $20 hot dog, hot dog in Ooh. Hollywood somewhere. What? Yeah. What? I don't what know. I don't know. It's just a okay. hot dog. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, next. More questions. Uh, the, the, the whale. The whale. Uh, uh, terrifying. Um, how, how do you design a creature like that? Uh, is that... Uh, a group process? Is that someone coming in and pitching this singular idea? Um, it's always a group process. Yeah, sure. We love yeah. to build a monster. Of course, Sarah, but you already mentioned your uh, fear of big scary things in deep big, dark scary waters. Fish, specifically fish. Yeah. It has to be in water. That makes it a hundred times more scary. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we enjoy a kind of um, I hesitate to say monster creation. We like making critters. Yes. Sure. Creatures. We try to treat them as animals that mm -hmm. fit into the ecosystem in a logical way. Yeah. Even that, if they're scary. Mm -hmm. And that they are the way they are and they act the way that they do because of the environment that they inhabit and the, mm -hmm. evol you know, the lifestyle that they have because of how they've adapted lifestyle. to where they reside. <laughs> you know, the blinding in season one is the mm -hmm. way that it is because of the territory where it lives mm -hmm. and the whale is the way that it is. and. Echo locates the way that it does because of mm -hmm. the abyssal habitat that it has. So yeah, we like to approach creature design in a very like naturalist biologist mm -hmm. kind of way where we're starting with, well, why would it be? Or what would it be mm -hmm. like based on where we are? Mm -hmm. So we're making creatures more mm -hmm. so than trying to just create freaky monsters. But also, come on, we, oh, yeah. we wanted it to be incredibly scary, oh, and yeah. I think we succeeded. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty I also, I, you guys have quite the, um, the pension for pension? Pen, pen, pension. 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 pension, that's right. Yeah. Pension, pension for... Uh, <laughs> pension. For um, like double entendres, yeah. essentially. Whale. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, the whale, but spelled W-A-I-L. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Terrors. Yes. Yes. Three meanings into a word if we can. Mm -hmm. Yes, reference my earlier comment about somebody Spending weeks looking for words. <laughs> for I love the wordplay, though. It's true. It's, it's like, very there's fun. There's the unworthy sh vessel, mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, unworthy ship. Oh, the um, unpuns just write themselves. Oh, they're great. <laughs> Unrise is so great. Yes. Yeah, it's it's very fun. Um, jumping ahead, but I don't, you know, want to want the audience to, uh, to experience all this in its glory. But episode nineteen. Mm. Got to jump to the finale. Um, the finale is full of incredible revelations. We get to see inside our characters, both um, <clears throat> figuratively and oh, yes. literally. True. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk about, uh, talk to us about the development and meaning of this most recent and final episode of season two, because holy heck, it's a doozy. <laughs> It is kind of a doozy, but at the same time, it's very different from the finale of season one, which is yes. fast-paced, action-packed, lots of running around, lots of um, thrilling action excitement. Mm -hmm. And really, the finale of season two is we listen to Lark think for a while, mm -hmm. and then Weep gives a speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's that, it's that inner cosmos we were talking about earlier. The inner drama. Yeah, it's... It's uh, exciting because it's the first time we really get to look inside Lark's head mm -hmm. for such an extended period of time. 
there have been times when we get to see Weep's inner thoughts, and certainly Phineas's mm -hmm. inner thoughts. Yeah. We explore a bit. And we do get to bit. look into Weep's head too. Yes, <laughs> in more ways in than a different way. <laughs> yeah. But Lark has been a pretty closed book up until this point, with just little yeah. glimpses here and there. Mm -hmm. So um, we really open her up at that moment for the audience and let you see exactly what's going on in there. Get vulnerable, get real, mm -hmm. and set her up for the course of action that she's set on for season three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the, the the pieces on the board have been kind of set and this is the context that, that where we're at, I guess, as season three and its imminence will begin. Yeah, so. the, the imminence, I'm especially I feel like that is very appropriate for, uh, for Weep. Feels like we're kind of seeing uh, mm -hmm. his Getting into his final Pokemon evolution. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's looking, he's <laughs> feeling better than oh, ever. Look looking better wow. than ever, too. He's feeling and himself. it's been quite a number of episodes since we've seen him mm -hmm. at this point. So this revelation is coming after a long drought of weep content. Yes. And then suddenly, more weep content than anyone ever wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Inside and out. Yep. Ooh, nice. Amazing. Peek behind the curtain. Well, I would love to talk about the appendices, which is one of my favorite parts of the show. Um, it's this incredible, really kind of bonus content and bonus art that gives you a little bit more detail and kind of further context and fleshing out the world of the Midst universe. Um, they're always just like so beautiful and detailed and thought provoking and inventive. Um, and the range of the styles are always so vast, which is always super fun. Um, let's get into what the creative process is like for some of these. Um, Sarah, I know you do so much of the art and graphics for this. Uh, I know it's like a group a gr effort to, to do the writing, but um, yeah, let's 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 start with uh, number four, appendices appendices number four, the yeah. textbook. Oh. So um, usually we'll start with just collectively brainstorming um, some ideas for mm -hmm. what a good appendix would be for a given episode, and for this one, it was pretty clear we needed both a academic explanation mm -hmm. and a visual demonstration of. What, what the heck are terrors? How mm -hmm. did they work? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Matt took it away with some writing of the copy. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's always a thrill to when we've kind of identified what sort of information we want to present in the appendix to then go looking for how that information could be presented. So there's sort of a period yeah, of like... You're always researching all kinds of... <laughs> IRS documents <laughs> and academic texts and... <laughs> catalogs and things. Yeah, it, this was a lot of fun to put together and to like help give a slightly different perspective to the effects of a terror that, you know, the episode does in a very like gentle, well, is it gentle? It, At times, it but can it's be. interesting that you would go to that word first. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, to, to sort of come at it from, you know, what would be a more academic approach. How would we describe how these things come to be? And a, a textbook was, mm -hmm you know, a type of appendix that we used in season one. So it felt like a really cool opportunity to return to that same text and jump ahead or to a different mm -hmm. spot in it to get a little bit more insight into the way the fold works. Presumably this is just a copy of the book that was left somewhere on the Islet of Midst mm -hmm. and got caught in the terror. Yes. Ugh. Love it, love it. Um, and of course, if you subscribe at midst.co, you get Correct. First you glimpses all at all these yeah. and all kinds of digital downloads yeah. and bonus content. Yeah. Just saying, yeah. as, a, as a subscriber myself, yeah. it's just one of the things <laughs> that I enjoy um, <laughs> about supporting this awesome uh, podcast. Uh, this one was one of my favorites, I Sev Unseen. So I love a good pun. Oh. And I love a good uh, Hot Boy magazine. Oh, yes. oh. Don't we all? Yes. <laughs> uh, Look at him. Uh. <laughs> he has been <laughs> gasified. Yes, he has been gasified. Uh, yeah, yeah, all the a, all the details on this were, were great. This um, was a fun one for sure. Um, was this you, uh, Sarah? Yeah, I posed for this, and uh, <laughs> just, that's what my forearms really look like. Amazing. No, yeah, actually, digital paint over. <laughs> actually, I did use a specific reference image for this, and it was a picture of Fabio. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So but we referenced a lot of um, 
you know, Seventeen magazines and other mm -hmm. uh, teen focused magazines like that from the 90s. Mm -hmm. And there's just such a distinct style of like article mm -hmm. headlines for those. Mm -hmm. So these were really fun to come up with. And it was just like a group brainstorm session. We were. Great. We it's, were really cracking ourselves yeah, up. Yeah, kind Abs of, of mica. Original oh, listicle sort of mm -hmm. periodical. Ugh. But also, in, on a more serious note, I suppose, wanted to show how um, these public figures like mm -hmm. Consectors are kind of like, uh, their image is like... Everything. And yeah. They're adored mm -hmm. and lauded and fawned over by mm -hmm. the public. Yeah, and it gives you such a like... But yeah, the look of what the average, you know, young adult reader might be sort of faced with in the realm of media sure. that they're exposed to in the mm -hmm. trust. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that they're like the they're the pop stars. Mm -hmm. Influencers. Exactly. Yeah. Influencers. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's take another. <laughs> I know another look at a different appendix. Uh, this one from number six, I think. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. Zoolog. So oh for a while, Zolog? before we had the amazing artwork to accompany the episode, this was the only depiction, like visual depiction of a whale. And it just really cracks me up that it's kid friendly and it's mm -hmm. smiling and it doesn't, it gives you a slightly different uh, feeling than the first hand <laughs> account of the episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's so cute I in know. this context. I want to see like a word search, like, like this would be at a placemat at a restaurant or something. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. So um, cool. And I think we have time for one more. We're going to skip to number 13, the Lucky yearbook. 13. Lucky 13. Bloop. The yearbook, yes. Look at that. Love them. This is another favorite one. You've been chucked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sweet Carson. Watch out. The Chuckster Camper. I love yeah. it. So good. Yeah, so some, the, some, I'm going to cut you off with an important announcement. You heard it here first, folks. People have asked us, are we ever going to be doing any future MIDS productions? The answer is yes. MIDS 2, The Adventures of the Chuckster. <laughs> <laughs> We're back with Chuck Carson. Yes. What's his name? Carson Kemper yes. or something? You've been asking for it. Yeah. It's all anyone it's can talk gonna about. It's just going to be hours and hours of getting chucked. <laughs> it's also so fun to see, like, oh, kind of, you know, nerdy Imelda. Mm -hmm. Yes. Look yeah. at those bangs. Yeah, I know. and her necklace of kynum. Yes. Yep. If you I, notice. Yes. I also love the little Hawkeye note to suits. her. The little note to her down there. I'm so glad we got to meet you and be friends and thank you so much and have a great summer. <laughs> you know they hate each other. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's, well, or do they? The timing of this episode, or this appendix, was very intentional, right on the tails of that upsetting bank visit with Weep, mm -hmm. and uh, it seemed an interesting opportunity to show uh, a more innocent Amelda, mm -hmm. clearly a very ambitious student, mm -hmm. yeah. and some of these friends that she made in school may still be a part of her life. Oh, even interesting. Yeah, there's some familiar names you may recognize. Yes. Close listeners of the show may detect some, interesting. Uh, mm. some known entities. I'm leaning in. I know. <laughs> And of course, there's the Chuckster. Of course. Sure. And, yeah. and the, most yeah. How can we forget? We care about him the most. I, I certainly do. <sighs> well, you guys, uh, you know, got third season releasing next week, um, which, as time. we've mentioned before, is the final season of Dude. this uh, this arc. This, this story, it's, it's a story, story within the world of myths, but this is the final season of it, but it's not its not the last story you will ever tell, is it? Yeah, Are you right? guys done telling stories? Yeah. I certainly hope not. <laughs> Are there a, stories to tell in the midst cosmos? It is a big cosmos, Sam. There's a lot out there. Beyond the highest light, beyond midst, beyond sequester, there are very high heights and very deep depths in that mm -hmm. cosmos. So are there more stories to tell in that, in that strange universe? I think the answer is, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Know it. And I, I know guess, it. you know, since it's been about a year since we checked in with you guys, just um, kind of on a personal level from, you know, Sam and I to you guys, you still having fun? You still liking it? Oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh, I know we oh. sucked you into <laughs> this weird fun. vortex here in Critical Role Land, but yeah. Look at us. We're disembodied We're ghosts, ghosts. Floating yes. above your fireplace. Right. How could yeah. that not be fun? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 you did great. Yeah. Oh, hey. oh, 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 thanks. Okay. Which oh. hand, which direct, 
I'm patting you now. Oh, How can about I, can I have, oh, oh wait. <laughs> but truly, yeah, the phase on a, field is inverted. You have to use the other hand. Yes. <laughs> on a serious note, though, the experience of season one and season two releasing has been extremely thrilling to see it, you know, exposed to new audiences. Season three is really where the like the new stuff is coming, where mm -hmm. you know we've been able to new to everyone, yeah. our original fans and people who have discovered Midst more recently. So we are yeah. so excited. The wait and is so ready almost ready over. To yes. show it to oh, you. Yes. Man. And let us tell you, season three is uh, bananas. It's, it's bananas. Gonna be, it's going to be cool. First. Yeah, bananas. <laughs> Said third person. Yeah, yeah, there, it's bigger and better and crazier than ever. And I think we're very pleased and we're very excited. We cannot wait for you to get it in your ear tubes and eye tubes as well. If yes. you choose to subscribe All to National YouTube. Yeah, whatever <laughs> tubes you prefer. Uh, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to get these episodes a little earlier than everybody else yep. as a subscriber. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll wrap us up by saying thank you uh, yes. from the bottom of our hearts uh, to yours. Thank you so much to Matt, Sarah Zen, for joining us tonight on our second Midst Roundtable. Now for everybody out there, Midst Season 3 premieres February 14th Valentine's on Midst.co, the Critical Role YouTube channel, and everywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, new episodes will be available every Wednesday. Subscribers like me and Marisha mm -hmm. uh, on Midst.co will get the first three episodes right away. Um, let's close it all out by taking a look, a little preview, if you will, at the trailer for Midst Season 3. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. And enjoy. See you soon. Toodaloo. Oh, hey, it's us. Your friendly neighborhood ambiguous shadowy weirdos here to say cryptic things at you as usual. Are you ready for the third and final season of Midst? We certainly are. Some of you have been waiting a very long time. Good news, the wait is almost over. Midst, man, what the heck? A lot of questionable characters doing incredibly problematic things to each other in a series of increasingly insane escalating circumstances while struggling to follow their warped moral compasses and do what they think is hopefully the right thing. Can the trust get worse somehow? Can Phineas get less worse? How much longer can Lark outrun her past? Are there any objectively good guys in this story other than Lockweed? How can any of these threads possibly be resolved with only one more season to go? And we still don't even know what happened with that dang moon. Are we ever going to get some answers? Yes. As a matter of fact, we will. The third and final season of Midst unfolds February 14th. Listen to the pure sound experience anywhere you stream podcasts or watch illustrated video episodes on the Critical Role YouTube channel. In the meantime, you can follow us at Midst Podcast or join the fold on Midst.co to get early access to episodes, behind the scenes bonus content, music downloads, digital artwork, and more. Everything's been leading to this. We'll be with you to the end. Do you trust us?